Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with seafood sausage. That's right, out of all the sausages in the world, seafood sausage is by far the least popular. And I think the reason for that is that when it comes to the land animals, you can make a really good sausage from old and unusable parts. Whereas when it comes to seafood sausage, that's not necessarily the case. All right, we actually have to use some nice seafood to make this. But what this stuff lacks in popularity, it more than makes up for by not containing lips and ears. So with that lovely thought, let's go ahead and get started. And first up, I'm gonna saute a little bit of shallot in some butter over medium heat until it just starts to turn golden. And by the way, feel free to substitute some finely minced onion and or garlic if you want. And while many people do add this raw to the mix, I think a few minute saute does this wonders. So that's what I did. And once those shallots did soften and sweeten up and turn sort of golden like this, we'll go ahead and turn off the heat. And we'll simply let that cool down to room temp before we add it to our seafood, which will be the next thing we cover. And for today's selection, we'll be going with some peeled and deveined shrimp, some skinless, boneless salmon. And yes, that piece of salmon was previously frozen. Since I will take frozen wild salmon over fresh farm salmon any day. And then we're also going to need some kind of whitefish. And in my case, I'm using sole. And then what we'll do once our seafood is set is go ahead and transfer it into a food processor. And as we do, let me give you two huge tips. First of all, we're going to want to cut our seafood up into smaller pieces. And that's simply to help ensure even blending. And the second tip is make sure this product is very, very, very cold. All right, doesn't matter what animals we're talking about. Cold meat makes better sausage. And then to our smaller, very cold pieces of seafood, we'll go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of breadcrumbs, as well as our main binder, which is going to be egg white. But in addition to that, we'll also add one whole egg. Since I think with all this lean seafood, we could use a little more fat. And then once that's in, we'll go ahead and season this up with some kosher salt and a generous amount of it, as well as the obligatory shake of cayenne. Make that multiple shakes. And then assuming it's cooled down to room temp, we can go ahead and add our shallots, as well as last but not least, some freshly chopped parsley. And that's it. This is now officially ready to process. And as usual, we'll start this by pulsing on and off. Starting off with nice slow pulses at first, and then transitioning into longer pulses. And what we're looking for as soon as the mixture sort of blends together, is basically for it to start clumping up on the blade, which is what we have right about here. All right, you see that, how it all kind of comes together? And for a better look, let me go ahead and take off the top and grab a spatula so you can get a little better idea. And by the way, I'm doing a smooth style of seafood sausage, sort of inspired by a boudin blanc. But if you want, you can do coarser textures of this sausage, and we'll discuss that on the blog. But anyway, what we'll do at this point is transfer that into a bowl, because I highly recommend chilling this before you work with it. All right, you don't have to. You could probably start now. But I do find this stuff easier to work with if you pop it in the fridge for an hour or two, which is what I did. But whether you chill yours or not, here's how we're going to form our sausage. All right, we're going to transfer exactly one fourth of our mixture onto this piece of plastic. And then using some dampened fingertips, we will sort of shape this into a log. And I find this initial shaping and smoothing before we roll in the plastic very helpful. And I think you'll end up with a smoother, better looking sausage. And then once we form that basic shape, we'll go ahead and roll this up in the plastic. And once rolled up, we'll sort of twist the ends and apply a little bit of pressure in an attempt to make this as even as possible. And then what we'll do once we have that initial shape done with plastic, we'll transfer this onto a piece of foil and basically do the exact same thing. Okay, we will roll that up. And then we'll go ahead and take those ends and twist them in opposite directions, which is gonna sort of press and tighten everything up. But don't do it too hard. This will explode, and I'm not kidding. And that's it, once those ends are twisted up and folded back, we should have a perfectly formed, and more importantly, waterproof seafood sausage ready to poach, which I'm happy to report is the next step. So let's head to the stove, where we brought some water up to a simmer in the saucepan, and we will go ahead and transfer our encased seafood sausage in. And then just to make sure those all stay submerged, I'm gonna to top it with a small plate. But be careful, don't crush them. Otherwise, you're going to end up with some non-sausage shapes. And then what we'll do is cover this and cook it on low for 20 minutes. All right, no stirring, no peeking. Just leave it covered like that for 20 minutes. At which point we will uncover it. And we'll transfer those into a bowl of cold water to stop the cooking process. If, by the way, you want to stop the cooking process. 
All right, theoretically, you could remove these from the plastic and foil and eat them right away. But I much prefer mine browned in butter first. So what I like to do is let these cool down in the cold water for about 15 or 20 minutes. At which point, once cooled, I'll go ahead and pop those in the fridge until I'm ready to cook them up. So basically, I like to do this part ahead. And then simply brown these up and heat them through when I'm ready to serve. And again, if you want to eat right away, you can just start browning them as soon as they come out of the water. But like I said, I prep mine ahead. So I pop those in the fridge until later that day. At which point we'll go ahead and pull those out. And we'll remove that foil and plastic. And as you'll notice, I'm doing this on a paper towel. Because there is going to be a good amount of moisture. And we kind of want to dry this off before we brown it in the butter. So we'll go ahead and take off the foil and the plastic. Which I'll do by snipping off this end. And then sort of pushing it out. And that's it. Check it out. One perfectly formed poached seafood sausage ready to brown. And then besides drying it off, if you want, you can take a knife and trim off any unsightly parts. Like this, for example. A little bit unsightly. And that's it. Once our sausage are unwrapped and patted dry and possibly trimmed, we'll go ahead and brown these up in some melted butter over medium heat. And what we'll attempt to do is somehow, some way, brown as much of the surface as we can. Which can be a little tricky since these are round. But we will do our best. And basically we'll just keep turning it, browning spots that are not browned, until most of the spots are browned. And by the way, a little tip here. Sometimes it helps to move the sausage to the edge of the pan to get it to sit exactly how you want it to sit. But anyway, what we'll do is spend about five or six minutes browning the outside. At which point I like to reduce my heat to medium low and then cover these. Okay, because we want to make sure these are heated all the way through. Which of course you can always test with a thermometer. But anyway, that's my general strategy. Five or six minutes of browning uncovered on medium. And cook it covered for another five or six minutes until completely heated through. And then once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and remove those sausages from the pan. And we'll go ahead and keep those warm on a plate for a few minutes while we make a very, very simple butter sauce. So into the exact same pan, we'll go ahead and add a couple tablespoons of water. As well as the juice of one lemon. And we'll set our heat to medium high. And bring this up to a boil. And all we're going to do is let this bubble for about a minute until it reduces by about half. Which is about what I have right here. And once that's happened, we'll reduce our heat to the lowest setting. And we'll go ahead and toss in some chunks of cold butter. As well as some freshly chopped parsley. And what we'll do is swirl that pan. And keep that pan moving until the butter disappears. Okay, feel free to use a whisk or spoon if you want. But just swirling the pan like this works beautifully. And maybe season this up with a little bit of salt. And that's it. In just a couple minutes, you've made a beautiful lemon parsley butter sauce. And as soon as that is set, we're ready to plate up. Which I'm going to do on some potatoes. But pasta or rice would also be great choices. So you decide. I mean, you guys are, after all, the Bob Rosses of your seafood sausage. But I really do enjoy mine on a happy little cloud of mashed potato. And of course, we'll finish this up by spooning over our butter sauce. And that's it. Our seafood sausage is done and ready to enjoy. And man, did I enjoy this. I mean, I don't even know what to brag about first. The incredible texture or the amazing taste. But let me go ahead and do texture first, since you can get a great look at that here. And I mentioned earlier I was kind of patterning the texture after a boudin blanc. And that is pretty much exactly what we achieved. All right, we have a smooth, fine, tender texture that's not too rubbery, which can be a big problem with some seafood sausage recipes. So for me, this is just absolutely perfect. And as far as the taste goes, that's just as impressive. Okay, our shrimp, sole, and salmon have combined to produce a very mild, very pleasant seafood flavor, which I find difficult to precisely describe. So I'll just summarize by saying it's very delicious and very tasty, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, the only thing I don't like is the name. I think seafood sausage is kind of generic and unremarkable. So we should probably come up with something more interesting. Like, I don't know, the Wiener of Neptune. Or not. Probably sounds better in Italian. Anyway, I'll work on that. But in the meantime, I really do hope you give this amazing seafood sausage a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.